Hey everybody, this is Bob the Science Guy. You may remember that I put this photograph up in a video about a week ago, and it was just a short tutorial on how to analyze a photograph. You know, while I didn't really think that this is a particularly controversial video, you can imagine my surprise when I found that none other than Mr. Nathan Oakley decided to comment on it this morning. Well, it seems he took exception to my scientific method and felt that I needed a name change because I clearly wasn't using science as he defines it. It seems the latest flat earth tactic is to question the use of scientific method in a vain attempt to continue to deny reality. Well, Mr. Oakley, I do not accept your cherry-picked definition of scientific method nor your checklist, and it's time to take you to school. Nathan and Anthony, what you're using here is called a reification fallacy. It's also called concrete ideation in psychiatry. You see, my friends, scientific method is a method, which is why they call it scientific method. It's a process and not a checklist. Let me give you a couple of examples. In the United States, we play a lot of baseball. Baseball has its own rules and strategies. Likewise, basketball is a contest between two teams according to its set of rules. Soccer has yet another set of rules. While these are all different games, they are based on certain common factors. They are all team sports. They are based on athleticism and fair play. And even though each of them is different, they are all sports. Which brings us to the lovely orphan Red. She recently designed an experiment to test Eratosthenes, and this is the write-up of her scientific method, and she did a fine job. But the question is, is would she meet Mr. Oakley's muster for scientific method? Where are her independent and dependent variables, and are they actually even needed? Well, in reality, to insist that she has to fill out this checklist for scientific method is what's called a reification fallacy. This is akin to declaring baseball not to be a sport because it doesn't follow the rules of soccer. While the use of independent and dependent variables is a useful tool in scientific method, not all experiments are required to use them. For example, in medicine we use the Framingham study, where we just followed people that lived in a town in Massachusetts for decades to monitor their health. While there are not necessarily dependent or independent variables in that, it certainly is science. The reason for this is that there are many definitions of scientific method. They have a varying number of steps and they're designed to measure different things. The key to it is, is your premise testable? Did you pick the correct test to get a meaningful answer as to whether or not it's true or false? Did you interpret those tests correctly and can you defend it? So going back to our photo analysis observation. The premise was, could we use line of sight to determine how much of a distant mountain is visible? And using that data, make an estimation of the shape of the Earth. Our dependent and independent variables include the known elevations and distances of the mountains, the laws of perspective, and then we varied for shape of the Earth. Determining what we would see if the Earth was flat versus the Earth was curved, and then comparing our actual observations to those determinations. Now, a completely different type of experiment would be Eddington's experiment to verify Einstein. Here he is comparing Einstein's equations to the actual refraction of starlight at a solar eclipse. The fact that the refraction matched Einstein's predictions exactly confirmed gravity. Confirming the fact as well that scientific method is very dependent on what the experiment is attempting to show. What you don't understand, Mr. Oakley, is that scientific method is not a tool for you and other members of the Flat Earth Movement to try and use to discredit rigorously tested and peer-reviewed scientific data, merely because they did not check off a box of your favorite and cherry-picked definition of the method. So, Mr. Oakley, my advice to you is that if you need to go to a dictionary to figure out what scientific method is, you don't truly understand it. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Please remember to subscribe and like this video.